What is going on, everyone? Riddick here, and this is your RCW podcast for Sunday, December 4th, 2022. We are going to talk about Bray Wyatt and the recent happenings that we got to get caught up on. And I'm going to touch on the Usi, Sami Zayn, bloodline storyline that's going on. That is pretty much the hottest storyline in all of pro wrestling right now. And so that's what we're going to kick off with. We're going to kick off with the Sami Zayn stuff that's been going on. Of course, at Survivor Series War Games, Sami had finally pulled the trigger. And he low blows his best friend in order for Jey Uso to get the win in the War Games match. This all happens after we saw Sammy talking to Kevin Owens right outside the Bloodline locker room while Jay was eavesdropping. And when Jay came out and asked him if he had talked to anybody, Sammy said, no, I just got here. I just got here. And he pretty much lied to his face. And then, of course, Jay knows he was lying to him because he was listening in. So in the War Games match... Sammy then, uh, you, you didn't see Sammy or Kevin touch each other the entire match until that moment where Sammy jumps down, he stops the referee from counting when Kevin pretty much had the match won. And Owens looks at him like, what the hell are you doing? And then that's when we get the low blow. Jay gets the, uh, well, Sammy hits a haluva kick on Owens, I do believe, and then Jay gets the... It's the win for the bloodline. And then, of course, they're all hooting and hollering, and they're happy that Sammy did what he did, and Jay, of all people, embraces Sammy in the ring. Big hugs and all that stuff. The, least per- the last person you would expect to be hugging Sammy, and that's how the show went off the air. And, of course, the next night, they come out, they're celebrating on Raw, and then Owens comes out and says he doesn't want anything to do with Sammy anymore. Doesn't want to be his. Doesn't want to ride down the road with him anymore. Be his travel partner or anything like that. Now through all this, Sammy kind of has a look on his face of uncertainty. Not as bad as he had at War Games. At War Games, Sammy was emotional over what he did, and you could tell that he was sad that he hurt his friend. But at the same time, yay, I'm with the Bloodline now or whatever, right? It's kind of like, you know, when <laughs> it's kind of like, say you have a loved one and they love you unconditionally, but there's this other girl and she's just all cute and hot and you go and play with her, right? You don't really love her. She doesn't really love you. Meanwhile, the one you really love is just sitting off in the corner, pretty much heartbroken because you're a piece of shit. It's kind of like what it is, but for whatever reason, the crowd's just eating it up. You know, they're all oozy about it. They're very oozy about it. They're feeling very oozy. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Kevin on Monday Night Raw had said he doesn't want nothing to do with Sammy anymore. And Sammy, you know, says the same thing pretty much. And then on SmackDown, we got a little interesting segment where... Sammy had a match with Sheamus. That that went over the way it did. And Jay ends up helping Sammy win the match. But later on in the back, Sammy's back there with the Usos. And Solo Sokoa is back there as well. Usos tell him, why don't you take Solo with you? Because Sammy's trying to get them to go out for late night eats somewhere. They're like, oh yeah, take Solo with you. You've been making a lot of enemies lately. So, you know, he takes off with Solo. Then they're standing there talking. And then Jimmy says, why didn't you call him out on him lying to your face? You going to ask him about lying to your face? And Jay's like, well, Tribal Chief said that he's seen everything he needed to see. And everything was good. Or whatever. You can tell they're already planting the seeds of things are going to go down. And it's not going to end well for Sammy. Sammy's going to be getting the beat down of a lifetime. And it's going to be an emotional one. Very emotional one. Because it's coming. We don't know when exactly, but it's definitely going to happen between now and the Elimination Chamber, since the rumor has it that Sammy may take on Reigns for the Universal title at the Elimination Chamber, which should be interesting, because it does take place in Canada at that pay-per-view. 
or PLE, premium live event, right? But I'll tell you, when he gets that beat down, it's definitely going to, you're going to feel it. And there hasn't been a storyline like this in pro wrestling for a long time, an organically built storyline that, that has all these emotions and things that go along with it. It's been a really long time since you've had something like this. And you can compare it to the Yes movement. You can compare it to other things like in that same vein. But this is like, uh, on it's its own thing. But definitely have not felt this kind of storyline in many years in pro wrestling. And this is uh, it's going to be a doozy when it all comes to a head. And of course, you know, Kevin, even though he's saying that he doesn't want to be Sammy's friend, in, re in reality, he's just saying these things. And ultimately, who's going to come save the day and bail his buddy out of the, the hole that he dug himself? It'll be Owens. And then ultimately, I do believe that we get Sammy and Kevin teaming together at WrestleMania against the Usos and possibly taking those tag team titles off of them. And speaking of the tag team title, now some people, before we get into that, some people want Sammy to, to wrestle Reigns at, at Mania and take the title. I, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's the move. Although I can understand it, you know, kind of like the Yes movement where it's organically developed and you know, he's, he's, he's as popular as he is now. I get that. But I don't think that's necessarily the move. I think the move is you you get back with your friend that tried to tell you all these things that ended up coming true. You didn't believe him. And, of course, he bails your ass out. And you want to get back with your best friend who had your back from day one and go on to WrestleMania and take the titles off the Usos. Now, the tag team titles. The designs are going to be changing here soon. We know that there's new tag belts. That we know that WWE is in possession with them from the recent reports that have come out. And it looks to be that they will be on a black strap, but we don't know if they'll be platinum or they'll be gold. We do know that they'll have a WWE logo right in the center of them. Now, I don't know if that's going to look like the main title logo. I really hope not. I hope it's more... I just hope it's better looking than that and looks more, you know, classic championship style. I hope they did something that makes it more like that, but we'll see. We'll see. Either way, we're going to be getting new tag team titles, which says to me that, well, I mean, we don't know if there's going to be separate, you know, Raw and SmackDown titles. I really don't think so. I think we're getting one set of tag titles, and it's just going to be one set of tag team champions, which is the move, because that's really what makes sense at the end of the day. We're going to move on now. Well, you know what? One last thing. Some people might think Kevin Owens should take the title from Reigns. I'm not opposed to that idea. I'm not opposed to that idea at all, but I still think the story is Kevin and Sammy being a team and, and going up against the Usos. I think that the person to take the title from Reigns, you have a couple options, but you got to be careful how you do it. you got Cody Rhodes is, is right up there. You know, you can come back and win the Rumble and do it through those means. Some people say Bray Wyatt. I'm not sure we should go with Bray Wyatt right now. I would love it because, you know, the storyline's built in right there because Reigns has had the universal title ever since he took it from Bray. So that's a built-in story in itself. But I don't think we need to go there yet. Maybe, maybe next WrestleMania, not this coming one. And then there's now reports that The Rock is going to maybe be in the Rumble and win the Rumble. Please tell me that's not going to happen because that is not that is not the move my friends we do not want to go down that road no you want to do rock and roman at mania that's fine you need to figure it out other in a different way or or something because rock coming in and winning the rumble right now is completely ridiculous He's not even, you know, he's not even a part-timer, he's a no-timer and then he'll come back years later and do a match or whatever. The Rock coming in and winning the Rumble is absolutely not the answer to this and it, I just don't see it going over very well when you have other talent that needs that way more than The Rock and The Rock himself even knows that. He's no dummy. He he knows that he'd be taking up a spot from someone that really deserves to have that spot. 
So it just seems absolutely ridiculous that they would do that. But if they do it, I mean, it's going to be whatever. But I am definitely not down with that idea. But hey, what are you going to do? They do it, they do it. But here's the thing. You got to figure out a way to do it because you can't have The Rock winning the titles off of Reigns. That's just ridiculous. He's not going to be around. He's got obligations in Hollywood. You know, he can't risk hurting himself. He's already going to risk hurting himself. He's going to get involved in this stuff. And you really can't have him being the champion. You know, and The Rock is The Rock. It's like, do you really want him losing? I mean, I guess if you want to solidify Reigns as the head of the table, the tribal chief. I guess so. But does it need to be for the title? No, it doesn't need to be for the title. It absolutely doesn't. You know... It all goes back to the family, the bloodline, everything like that. You know, it doesn't need to be for the title at all. One way around it is you could have Reigns pull a double nighter, you know, double a double header basically. Uh, and he'll have to wrestle a match on both nights. You know, one and, and, and somehow whoever it is takes the titles from him. The next night The Rock wrestles him. I don't know. I don't know. But The Rock winning the Rumble and facing him for the titles is definitely... <laughs> just ridiculous in my opinion I, I hope that's not what happens we'll see but I don't know I think it should be Cody Rhodes right now that's the story right there that uh, that I think everybody could get behind you know not everybody's going to get behind Bray Wyatt going for the title right now because he just came back he has yet to wrestle a match which we're going to talk about here in a second so yeah I don't know about that I don't know about that Cody Rhodes is probably my number one pick for taking the title off of Reigns. Like I said, there's some other options there, but that would be my number one option. So now let's go ahead and get into the Bray Wyatt stuff that we need to get caught up on. Since the last I talked about this, we have now seen that Bray is getting involved with L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight was in the back one night, and Bray's little... Uh, logo and stuff is slashing on the screen behind him he notices it gets all angry about it bray shows up backstage they have a few words bray headbutts him and walks away then we get to the next week and la knight interrupts bray's promo from out and he's out in the ring la knight interrupts him comes out bray's pretty much saying he's sorry you know he didn't mean to do that and whatever L.A. Knight comes out like he's going to accept the apology, but then goes and proceeds to slap Bray across the face, not once, but twice, after fooling him into thinking that, uh, you know, he was actually going to shake his hand or whatever. So, this, of course, infuriates Bray, and then we see that L.A. Knight is attacked backstage. We don't know by who, but we see L.A. Knight under a pile of rubble, and... and when be, right before this happens, we see in the distance and dark shadows, we see the mask that Bray had worn when he returned at Extreme Rules, the Uncle Howdy mask, not the latex Uncle Howdy mask where we're like looking and it's like, you know, Uncle Howdy talking to us that we've seen with the hat and all that stuff. But Uncle Howdy, the hard, like the hard shell mask that he wore at Extreme Rules, that also represents Uncle Howdy. I mean, that's a given considering the new shirt, the T-shirt that's out, pretty much tells you that right there. And uh, so we've seen that mask in the shadows in the distance, so we know that something happened there. And then the following week, we also had another situation where L.A. Knight was attacked again, and again we see that mask in the distance in the shadows. And then most recently, Bray came out and said in, the, in a backstage promo on this past SmackDown that he wasn't the one that attacked L.A. Knight. And, you know, he was being very, uh, he was being very Bray Wyatt in this promo, very, uh, you know, cult leader Bray Wyatt in, in his way of, with his way of words and how he was talking. And he said, you know, if it was me that attacked L.A. Knight, you'd know it because there'd be nothing left of him. Now, I, just remember this, people. Uncle Howdy, when we see these little videos of Uncle Howdy, he's telling us that Bray is lying to us. He's telling us this over and over. Everybody wants to think that Uncle Howdy is somebody else. It's Bo Dallas. It's this person, that person. Folks, I, it's, it's Bray Wyatt. 
okay? It's Bray's voice, first of all, but it is Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is Uncle Howdy. It's his, it's in, it's in his head. It's his, you know, alter ego talking to him in his head. And that's who Uncle Howdy is. Okay, and he's telling us, you know, he's lying to us and this and that. And that he should revel in what he is, revel in what you are, right? Bray telling us that, oh, well, that wasn't me. Well, no, it wasn't him. It was his other alter ego, Uncle Howdy. Okay? So, at the end of the day, it's all Bray Wyatt. It's still Bray Wyatt, no matter what. I still think that we will see other people come into play. Bo Dallas will probably come into play. I seriously think we're going to see Eric Rowan come back as well. Somewhere, some way, it's going to be intertwined into everything. I do see that happening. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is they're saying, and the, and the rumor has it, that at the Royal Rumble, or whenever, whenever this is going to take place, it's going to be Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight in a new gimmick-type match called a Pitch Black match. Now, what that means, I have no idea, but... I really think the last thing we need is more gimmick matches. Like, why do we have to have gimmick matches? Why? Now, if it's done tastefully and it makes sense and it's not completely hokey and ridiculous, that's fine. But, I mean, what is a pitch black match? Are we just going to go out and it's going to be completely dark in the arena and you can't see anything that's going on? That would be ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know what it means. Does it mean that? You know, whoever turns the lights out first gets the victory. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I really don't know. But that is what they're saying. A pitch black match. I have no idea what the hell that is. I just hope it isn't hokey and ridiculous. But we'll see. We'll see. It might actually end up being cool. I don't know. Now... One thing I need to say is I am all for the long ter long term storytelling, the long term booking. I, I want Bray to have the time to tell his story, and that's fine. But he has done nothing other than cut promos and basically argue with himself for months, for like two months now. Okay, what we need is is a, at the very least we need to have like a squash match or two. Have him go out there wrestle a local jobber from the local city or whatever, just in a squash to get him, you know, back in the groove, see him in action in the ring, you know, get to see him in action in the ring. That's what we need a little bit of. We don't need it like every week, but every once in a while, just throw him out there in a enhancement match so that he gets out there and he gets back in the groove and the fans can see him in action once in a while. And, even though you're doing that, you can still intertwine the main story into all of it. You know, somewhere along the way in the segment, you can intertwine the main story and have it kind of flow through everything. But at least get them out there and, and, and get them moving and grooving a little bit again. Because nothing but backstage promos and, and every once in a while cutting a promo in the ring. I think people are getting antsy. I understand like in this day and age, people have no patience. I, I do, you know, but I, I, that's just not the way the world is today. And most people don't. They want it now, 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 now. <clears throat> I'm certainly not like that, but I do think it would be beneficial to get them out there in a few enhancement matches every once in a while, at least just to, you know, show his dominance, show that he's, he's you know, someone to fear. I don't know. Something like that. I mean... I get it. He's a special attraction. He's top merch seller. And, I mean, he's right up, you know, Sami Zayn's right up there with him right now with his honorary Oosh shirt and all that. But Bray is a top merch seller. And I understand he's a special attraction. And, and uh, it's all fine and dandy. But I still think we need to get him out there and moving and grooving in the ring a little bit. You know, that'll help things because... Right now, it's starting to be like we're spinning our wheels and we're not making too much progress here. And now we don't have a PLE or pay-per-view or whatever all the way until the Royal Rumble. That's a long time when we already have gone this long without seeing him in any kind of action in, in the ring. Of course, we've seen him backstage, you know, and we the, the backstage things that have happened. I mean, the most action we've seen out of him is the headbutt he gave LA Knight. That's pretty much it. And then the slaps he took from L.A. Knight. So, I think we need to get a little bit more action in there somewhere. 
just pepper it in a little bit. It don't have to be every week, but it'll kind of keep people from, you know, getting antsy, which they already are, because I see everybody getting antsy over it and getting all tired of it already, because they just can't be patient, you know. And I get it. That's, I get it. It's dragging along. You know, they're trying to make this a long-term thing, but there's there's things you can do to appease the masses while at the same time continuing your long-term story that you're telling. You know, so that's where I think they should go with it and how they should do it. But as far as where I think it's going, I think ultimately we get Eric Rowan, Bo Dallas in some form, I don't think at all that they're Uncle Howdy or anything like that. That's all Bray, okay? I mean, basically, Uncle Howdy's telling you that, hey, I was Funhouse Bray. Like, Uncle Howdy is Funhouse Bray, right? Because now we're seeing Funhouse Bray intertwined into all these little video segments with Uncle Howdy more and more. Like, this most recent one, there was a lot of Funhouse Bray being shown, and for they don't just do that for no reason. There's a reason that's being done. So it's almost like the Uncle Howdy, you know, persona or, or demon or possession, whatever it is. You know, that's like, <laughs> that was like Funhouse Bray, I guess, right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's what, maybe that's not what they're saying. I have no idea. But that's what I'm getting from it. Ultimately, where it goes, you know, we get Eric Rowan, probably, Bo Dallas, probably. Something's going to happen with Alexa Bliss because... We continue to see Bray's logo and stuff pop up behind her in her segments. And most recently, she has seemed like she's kind of starting to drift off and something's going to happen to her. Something, something weird's going on there with Alexa. Definitely keep an eye out for that. But as far as Bray, I, I'm enjoying what's going on. I think maybe they could pepper in some kind of action here and there. Just to, just to keep things moving along instead of spinning in circles. Spinning in circles. Huh. Full circle. Red circles. Hmm. Hmm. It all means something, people. It all means something. Anyway. Like I said, Uncle Howdy, it's Bray's... It's in his mind. Okay? And if we see some kind of form of Uncle Howdy actually wrestle, it's going to be just Bray comes out in that hard shell mask... You know, and he, he takes it off before the match or whatever. But him wearing that mask, and we we see that it's him in that mask. We know clearly that he is Uncle Howdy, and when he wears it, he's telling us that that alter ego has taken over for that moment, and that's what we're getting. The other question I have is, when do we see Uncle Harper? Because we know this is another name that was copyrighted. Uncle Howdy seems to be pushing the buttons of the dark side. Perhaps Uncle Harper will be the one to be tapping on the good side and saying, hey, no, 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 let's not do that. We have not seen anything Uncle Harper related yet, so you know that's coming. And it's definitely, you know, in honor of Luke Harper, Brody Lee, his friend. So, And I'm sure coming from Bray, it's going to be tastefully done and not just some ridiculous nonsense that's going to be disrespectful. Bray would never allow that to happen. So whatever it is, in whatever form or shape or whatever, it'll be it'll be done tastefully, I'm sure. And ironically enough, I feel like that would be, you know, the good side of things, you know, good personality or alter ego, whatever you want to call it. One other thing I've noticed is when we see Bray in the back, he's very much, he, he's more... You know, Bray Wyatt, cult leader Bray, talking in his, you know, strangeness and all that stuff and being very creepy and all that. However, when he comes out to the ring and he's out in front of the people, he's not talking like that at all. He's very, you know, oh, Wyndham. He's very Wyndham, right? Normal, just talking to the people. But when we see him backstage, he's very ominous and very Bray Wyatt, right? That's another thing I noticed, which is something to keep an eye on as well. So, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much how I feel about it, where I think it's possibly going, where we end up. It's, it's anybody's guess at this point where we end up. 
but it looks like we're going to be getting this match with LA Knight. I don't understand. I, I really don't understand how you're going to play this out until a Royal Rumble. But, man, it, they got a long way to go, and <laughs> I, I just don't know how you're going to stretch it out that far. We'll see. Maybe they end up deciding to do it on a, a random night on SmackDown or, or something like that, or, like, you know, right before Christmas we get this match. I have no idea. But that's a long time to go to stretch this out to get that match. That's why I say we, we, we should probably see him in an enhancement match or something like that until we get there. Because the people are going to be, they're going to be like, yeah, I'm done. You know, and it's not, not me. I don't mind. I, I'm all here. I'm all 100% in for it. But the majority of the people that, you know, they can't even wait 10 seconds for something, let alone 10 weeks or whatever. So we're going to have to do something here instead of spinning our wheels over and over. And that's just the way I feel about it. And that's really all I got to say this week, folks. You know, all the other stuff going on in the in the uh, wrestling world is it is what it is. MJF is now the AEW champion. It looks like William Regal's on his way back to WWE, basically coming back home. And of course, naturally, why wouldn't he want to? I mean, his child, his 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 kid is in NXT, I do believe. So, and of course, him and Triple H are good buddies, so why wouldn't he want to come back home now that Triple H took over? So however he got out of that AEW deal, I have no idea, but clearly they wrote him off TV when MGF hit him with the brass knuckles in the back of the head and they stretched him out. And that's one thing I want to say about AEW. They're always so very quick cut, like, oh, man, this happened. Okay, back to the next segment. Oh, oh wow, this happened. Okay, on to the next segment. Boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang. They don't let anything breathe ever, and it's very annoying. Like, it's very annoying. There's no breathing time at all. It's just very boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, you know? And, and Oh, my God, he took him out with this. Okay, back to you, Renee. And it's like, um, uh, okay. It's very annoying and very ridiculous. And then finally, even though they still did it throughout that whole show, that one segment... They actually let breathe. They let the William Regal thing breathe after he got knocked out. You know, he got stretchered out. They actually let that breathe. And that felt so much better watching it because you're able to digest it and absorb it, the moment and everything. And then we're right back to do that after that. I mean, you know, whatever. Tony Khan, he's just, I don't even know. I think he, he books like he sniffs if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> He's a mile a minute, man. I don't know. He needs to slow it the hell down and, and take a breather, man. Take a breather. Slow down. Of course, the whole Rhea Ripley thing with Dominic Mysterio has been great. Rhea Ripley's been excellent. And I do believe Rhea Ripley deserves her chance at the women's title. With everything that she's done, she's damn well earned it. And uh, we've seen Mia Yim come back. We've seen Tegan Knox come back. These returns, you know, Triple H just throws them out there. And people aren't going to necessarily know who they are. Some people know who they are. Some people don't. I think he just wants to throw them out there and just get things moving along to get the women's division bolstered. And uh, so that's why he does that. And he knows they're capable to go out there and just get over by being in action in the ring. You know, and even in that segment when Tegan Knox came out, she, you know, started out with people like, hey, but then by the end of it, they were like, oh, yeah, okay. You know, so, and now people were getting behind me and Yemen stuff now, so, you know. But as far as vignettes, we have Lacey Evans and another repackage. Lacey Evans has been repackaged once again, going back to basics in her Marine Corps training and her time in the military. Although this time around, instead of it being hokey and ridiculous like that Vince McMahon version, this feels more realistic and more true and honest and, and gritty. And uh, I can get into this more. Now, it's been so many repackages of her, it's hard to get into anything when it comes to Lacey Evans. But I'll give it a chance. We'll see if Triple H knows what he's doing. I'm sure he does. I have faith in Triple H that he knows what he's doing. And uh, we'll see where that goes, too. So, 
that's about it. That's about all I got for you. I just wanted to kind of cover the main topics of what's been going on. So, yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of Judgment Day and how far they've come. That's that's great. Seeing them uh, go from being a complete joke group to now they're one of the best factions in the company. And that's always wonderful to see. And Oh, yeah, one last tidbit. Eric Young looks like he's on his way back to WWE as well. Hopefully it's with sanity and not just Eric Young because that wouldn't make any sense. I mean, we got Nikki Cross. You could put her with him. And make it make sense that way. But we'll see what goes on there. I like Eric Young. I've always liked Eric Young. So uh, we'll see what happens with that too. And I'm sure the returns aren't over yet. we still got you know, many weeks until the Royal Rumble. And the Royal Rumble itself. Where I'm sure we'll see even more returns. So yeah. With that said folks. I will catch you all down the road.